Andrea Ali, one of the most amazing makeup artists on YouTube, just posted a video yesterday on makeup for fair skin. It's called how to choose the right colors for fair skin tones. And as soon as I saw this video pop up in my subscription feed, I clicked it immediately and watched it through with great attention to detail. Whenever there's a chance to see a professional, very skilled, very talented and experienced makeup artist, Talking specifically about makeup for fair skin, I'm always interested in seeing that and I really wanted to see Andrea's take on it. So I decided that in this video today, I would try to recreate that look and follow that tutorial from Andrea. I do have actually a lot of the products that she used in that video, so where I can, I'm going to be pulling those exact products in and where I don't have the same products that she used, I will be going in with things in my collection that I think are quite similar. I had a ton of fun doing this video and I hope you will enjoy it. Before we get into it, if you're new here, welcome. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already and you end up liking this video and you like my content, I would love for you to consider subscribing. I like to focus mainly on high-end luxury and some indie makeup and doing a combination of reviewing new products, demoing products, um, and also dipping into my collection and playing with older makeup that I have. I also film in completely natural light. So one of my goals on my channel is to show the products as accurately as I possibly can without any extra lighting or color editing on my videos. So that's something that's very important to me as well. And so if all of that sounds good to you, I would love for you to subscribe. And now let's get into creating this look. Now in the video, they started out with several layers of skincare. I've already done my skincare, so I'm ready to start out with the foundation. I will say the model in this video, although she did have fair skin, she didn't have extremely fair skin in my opinion. My skin, for example, is lighter than hers. She mentioned that she was using the shade three of the Armani Luminous Silk Foundation, which is far too deep for me. Um, and then they also mentioned a couple other ranges that she wears foundation in. They mentioned uh, Mont Blanc from NARS and another shade from NARS that she can wear. And Mont Blanc, for example, from NARS is one that I find suits me really well in the summertime when I have fake tan, but not in the wintertime when I'm at my natural pale skin. So I'm a little bit paler than her, which is another reason that I wanted to try this whole look out and technique to see if it would work as well for someone with even fairer skin than the beautiful woman in the video. So I don't have uh, Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. I have had it in the past and I used the shade too, but it wasn't a great shade for me. It was still a little bit too dark, but I thought to kind of get a similar look and feel to that foundation, I would mix together my Hourglass foundation. This is the Soft Glow Ambient Foundation from Hourglass in the shade one. So it's a very pale shade with a slightly pinky undertone, but not very pink. And I wanted to mix that with the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation in the shade Siberia, which is a quite yellowy shade, which I think will counteract a little bit of pinkness in the hourglass really nicely. And it has a more kind of dewy radiant finish and mixed with the more kind of softly matte, softly glowing um, hourglass foundation. I thought I could get somewhere close to a luminous silk look. And I'm just mixing them together. That looks like a nice shade. I did two pumps of the NARS Siberia. The pumps from that one are quite small and a little less than one pump of the Hourglass because quite a lot comes out with the Hourglass. And I don't expect that I'll be using all of this, but I just wanted to get that ratio right. I'm going to apply this to my face and I'm gonna use my Westman Atelier blender brush to blend it in. So I have a thin layer of the foundation blended out, but I wanted to build up some more coverage in certain areas. In the video, Andrea seemed to not really use concealer for added coverage anywhere except for underneath the eyes. I'm going to see if that will work. I do have a couple of blemishes today, so I might have to go in with a proper concealer on those, but we'll see how far I can get with just building up the foundation. I'm switching over to a smaller brush because I just find it easier to blend smaller areas with this and keep the coverage a little bit more concentrated. So this is the Real Technique setting brush. Thank you. 
I think that's the first time Freddie's ever tried to brush my hair. Uh, let's go in with concealer. I'm going to try with this Huda Beauty uh, Faux Filter Concealer. This is in the lightest shade, which is Whipped Cream. It's a very, very light shade, but I noticed that in the video, um, Andrea used quite a light contrasting concealer shade for under the eyes. So this might be even too light, but I thought I'd give it a try and we can play around with it if I need to adjust the color. So this, like the Jouer one that was used in the video, is a very high coverage concealer. So I'm just gonna do a few little dots of it so it's not too much. And in her video, Andrea used a small angled brush. The closest thing I have to what she used is the Refer 32, but it's a little bit smaller than the one that she used. I'm going to try with it, but I might just switch over to my setting brush. Since I have enough of that, I'm just taking a little bit onto my lid and use that as an eye primer. It is quite stark and it's not fully blended. I'm just gonna leave it like that for now and start blending the other side. And then I'm gonna take my damp sponge actually just to finish it off. I'm gonna add a little touch more of the concealer onto my lids for primer. And finishing off my blend with the Damp Beauty Blender. I do feel like it's still a little bit intense, so I still have some of the foundation on the back of my hand. Going back in with my setting brush just to lightly kind of pat over that and just bring the color to looking a little bit closer to the rest of the skin. Now using the same contour product that they used in the video, this is Westman Atelier Biscuit. So I'm gonna use this to do my contour and then blend it out with my Westman Atelier setting brush or powder brush. Andrea used the Pat McGrath setting powder, which I do have, but I don't really like it. So I decided to go in with my Kosas Cloud Set powder in the shade Airy instead. And I did use a smaller brush for that, just like Andrea did. The Wayne Goss 04 was what I used. And I powdered mainly under my eyes and in the T-zone and anywhere that I had built up extra coverage over those blemishes just to make sure that product was really set in there. Now for blush, they use the Persona Bubble Blush, the cream version. I don't have that. It's one that I've really been wanting to try, but I have one that's essentially the same color, which is the Dior Backstage Rosy Glow Blush. And although this is a powder, this is the definitely the closest color match that I have to that bubble blush, so I thought I would still be better off going with this than any of my cream blushes. So I'm just gonna take my Sonia G Soft Cheek into this. In the tutorial, Andrea kept referring to bone structure and her friend's personal bone structure, which dictated where she placed a lot of the product. So I'm just going to go with what seems right to me for my face, but I am going to do what she did in the video and blend a little bit up into the kind of eye socket crease area as well, just to have that continuity with this blush color. Now the eyeshadow look was very simple, which I really appreciated. So I'm gonna be using my Gucci Gorgeous Flora palette for this. It has some tones that I think will work. I believe in the video she used only one eyeshadow on the main lid. She also went into one other one to set the liner. But for the main part of the lid, it was just one shadow. It was a taupey shade from a NARS palette. I don't have that palette. 
So I decided that I would go into this one. It was a taupe that looked like it maybe had a little touch of a purpley kind of undertone in it. So I'm thinking maybe this one in the Gucci palette could work. Um, I'm also looking at this one and this one. So I just kind of want to see how all those shades look and then decide what would be best. I've decided I think this one will probably be best. So I'm going to go with that and using my Sonia G Classic Crease to get that into my crease area. I was just referring back to the video and I had thought that they did brows after eyeshadow, but they actually did brows before eyeshadow. Now, Lucia in the video is a brow specialist and she did her own brows in the video. Uh, she used an Anastasia Brow Wiz, uh, that was her main product, and then the Refi Brow Gel. Now, I don't have either of those products and I actually don't have any of those very thin brow pencils like she used. So I'm just going to use my normal brow products and kind of my own method but trying to keep a little bit with what she did. So she started out with kind of outlining the brow very lightly and softly defining it, but not too much definition, both top and bottom of the brow. Um, now my brows aren't really like hers in a lot of ways, but she has hers all cleaned up underneath here where I leave mine with the little hairs there. So I don't know how well this method is going to work, but my main goal is just going to be kind of to fill in where I usually do, where I need to, and perhaps going with what she said about not doing too much in the inner brow area. Although I do typically like to go in those areas um, and bulk up my brows a little bit, but I'll try it out at first with leaving those areas alone a little bit more. I'm going to use the Anastasia Dip Brow. There are some birds out on the lawn, I think, so that's, if you hear any noise in the background, that's my cat, Eva, talking to the birds. Starting with my left brow and looking more closely at my brows, I'm not gonna try to define top and bottom. I just don't think that's going to work for my brows, the way they are shaped and the way they grow in. I'm really just doing what I usually do, taking quite a small amount of the dip brow on my little brow brush and filling in this most sparse area right here, trying to kind of extend the tail just a tiny bit. And then because I use the shade Caramel, it's a little bit warmer than my natural brow color. So I like to always just take a little bit over my natural brows where I don't really need to fill them in at all, but I just wanna get that color to match up a little bit better. And I'm just going to do the same on the inner part here that I said I might leave alone. I'm not going to try to fill in like I often try to add a little bit more thickness there, but I'm just kind of feathering that color over so it looks a little bit more the same all the way across. Brows are unfortunately not my specialty, so that's as good as it's going to get with the color product. Now I'm going in with the Anastasia Brow Freeze because I think that's kind of similar to the Refi Wax that she was using. And just taking the same spoolie, going right into the product with that, and then brushing it through my brows. And Lucia really specified to brush the brows in the direction that the hair grows. So not kind of overcorrecting too much and getting them really straight up or anything, just kind of following the natural direction of the brows. And another part of the discussion on brows that was in this video that I really appreciated was Andrea talked a little bit about how things look in real life, how your makeup looks in real life usually doesn't translate 100% on camera. So it takes quite a lot more makeup when you're on camera for the makeup to actually 
look like it does in real life and you can use a lot less makeup in real life. And I've certainly found that to be true while filming YouTube videos and doing photos and so on. So that's just something that I really like that they talked about that because I definitely find that to be true. So she used the exact same eyeshadow shade, which is another thing that I loved with just a smaller brush to get a little bit more of a concentrated application of that same eyeshadow color starting in the outer corner and then blending up a little bit. And then she went back in with her blending brush just to kind of blend it out even more. And she did the same kind of thing on the lower lash line using the smaller pencil type brush to add a little bit of color there and then going in with the fluffier brush to diffuse it out a little bit. So I'm going to do exactly that. I'm using the Wayne Goss 07 brush for that. I think this looks to be a similar size to the one that was used in the video. And she actually started applying this with the eye open so she could see exactly where to apply it. And if you have hooded or partly hooded eyes, that's an excellent tip to follow when you're deepening up the outer corner. Now with the fluffy brush. Aside from just how beautiful this makeup look was, I was really attracted to the simplicity of it. All the way from the face where she was just using one product for contour, no bronzer, just one blush, one highlighter. When I'm doing my makeup, I usually use a number of products and kind of layer them all up. And I certainly usually use more than one eyeshadow color all over my lid, but it's just so nice to kind of go back to basics and see what a beautiful look you can do with just one shadow on the lid and lower lash line. I'm gonna just do the same now on the other eye and then we'll come back for some liner and mascara. My left eye is much more hooded than my right eye and so I always have to build a ton more shadow in this part of my left eye than I do on my right eye and they never quite look even, but I just made sure to try and compensate as much as I could um, to get them to look a little bit more even looking, but it means adding a lot more depth right here and not having as much of a diffusion. I also have a lot more space on my right eyelid than my left eyelid, so there's not as much room to play around on this one. I'll sometimes even go in with a deeper eyeshadow color just on the left eye uh, to build that depth a little bit more easily. Lucia in the video has green eyes and I also have green eyes, so I'm hoping that all of these colors will give a similar effect. Andrea used the Pillow Talk eyeliner and I happen to have that, so I'm going to use it as well. And she did the liner um, on the upper waterline as well as like on the lash line, uh, but she said she kind of wanted to stay away from doing much of a flick at the outside of the eye. So I'm going to try to remember that. It's second nature for me to do a tiny little flick at the outside, but I'll try to keep with what she did and just keep it mainly right on the actual lid. She then used a small brush just to smudge the liner. I think she added a little bit kind of onto the inner part of the eye there. I'm doing that with the Refer 03. And then she went in with the shade Mulberry from the Anastasia Soft Glam Palette. Uh, I do have that palette, but it's kind of packed away. I've kind of archived it in my makeup collection because it's quite old. I don't think I could use those shadows anymore, but I thought there might be something similar in the retro palette from Natasha Denona. So I'm going to try with the shade Groove right here, which I think looks like a pretty close match to the eyeliner color. And I'm just setting that Pillow Talk liner with that. Same brush number three from Refer. So I am cheating a little bit. I'm using that Natasha Denona shade to do what I said 
I often like to do and just add that same color I used to set the liner that is the shade Groove, um, adding it only on that eye to build up my depth there so my eyes look a little bit more even. Then she went in with the Charlotte Tilbury mascara, the Pillow Talk one, which is again a kind of like burgundy brown shade. I don't have that one, it's another one that's on my to try list. But I have this one from L'Oreal, which I'm going to use, which I think is a similar color. So I'm going to put that on my top and lower lashes. There's the mascara on. I still have a little bit of uh, cleanup to do on that because I did get a little bit of mascara onto my lid, but while I'm waiting for that to dry, I thought I could go in with highlighter. And she used the Merit highlighter in the shade Kappa, which I also have and love. So I'm going to use it as well. And I'm gonna go in with this Fenty brush. This is the 125 face brush. And I noticed when she was applying the highlighter in that video, she kind of put it right onto the cheek and then back up onto the cheekbone. And that's a highlighter application that I really enjoy as well. So I'm just going to take this brush and do just that. There's the highlighter on. She also put it on the center of the lid I don't want to do that because I think it will crease my eyeshadow very quickly and I am planning to wear this for the rest of the day. So I don't want to take that risk right now. I'm gonna go back into the Gucci Gorgeous Flora palette here. And I think I'm just going to try to get a similar effect with this powder shadow and just place a little bit of that right in the center of my lid. Last up is lips. Andrea used a Bobbi Brown lip liner, which I don't have, but it looked to be quite a pale beige uh, on the cooler side. Most of my paler lip liners are on the warmer side, uh, but I thought I'd try this one from Natasha Denona. This is her I Need a Nude lip liner in the shade Ilana. So I'm going to try this and just do a little bit of overlining just like they did in the video, and then we'll go in with lipstick. Last up is the Armani Lip Power in the shade 104, which I do have. That's what that looks like. So it's again, more of a pinky, cooler, leaning nude shade. And she used a lip brush to apply it. I assume that's more because she's a makeup artist and will be using that lipstick on multiple people. But I thought I'd try out, at least starting out with uh, a brush to apply it and then I can just go straight in with the bullet if I want to, but I'm gonna use the Refer 21 brush. I will just pat a little bit more on there. Andrea did use a setting spray in her video. She used the Charlotte Tilbury one. I don't have that, and I don't really have any setting sprays right now have a bottle of MAC Fix Plus around somewhere, but it's quite old, so I don't really want to spray it all over my face just in case. I don't think it's gone bad, but I'm a little leery of spraying that all over my face. So I'm just going to leave it like this, like I usually do without any setting spray. And here is the completed look. So I have to say I'm very happy with this look. I do think it worked on my skin tone even though I'm a little bit lighter than Lucia in the video. I think all of these tones and all these colors together actually work really beautifully in that pale skin tone range. As I mentioned, I do love the simplicity of it. It's really nice to just go back to using fewer products, fewer shades, and still seeing that that can create a really, really beautiful effect. And even the combination of tones that Andrea used in this video, I think is really fun because I don't think I would have thought to use just this color of blush, this very specific cool toned blue pink blush 
paired with the more kind of berryish look that we got on the eyes with the combination of colors that are used there. But they do work really beautifully together. And then to tie it together with this pale, cooler, pinky nude lip is really fun as well. It just creates something that I think is very flattering. It's not too much. It's appropriate for so many different occasions. I think this is great as just a daytime look, but it would also work for more special occasions. If you wanted to amp it up a little bit, you could always add a little bit more glitter or shimmer on the eye or go in even with a little bit of a brown liner and create a bit of a wing on top of what you've already built. So I think it's a really versatile and just really flattering and pretty easy to accomplish look. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Let me know if you saw this video from Andrea. I will be linking it below because I thought it was a really great video and I would love for you to watch it as well if you're interested. And let me know if maybe you're inspired to try this makeup look as well. If you'd like to see more from me and you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I'd love for you to do so. Thanks again so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!